In this video, I'm going to have a bit of a look at making a, a seamless tiled texture. So uh, I do a little bit of game development. I do the art for a couple of projects and we're just revisiting one of our little platform games. That's a 2D side-scrolling platform kind of shooter, cave exploring kind of game. And I, I really thought the textures needed some work. So I thought, why not, instead of making them with paint, I'll try using actual photographs and make it look a bit more realistic in, in a stylized kind of way. Um, I was really taken by the game Hidden Deep, which is like a cave crawling kind of game, and thought I'd like to try to do that. So using Affinity Photo, um, I have done a bit of research and I've experimented a little bit sort of come up with a process that seems to work pretty well. Um, so what I did was uh, a friend of mine and I went to Hanging Rock in Victoria, Australia. It's a fairly famous rock formation. It's got these, uh, I think they're sandstone kind of columns. They're sort of a bit pixelated, but there's a famous movie called Picnic at Hanging Rock and uh, they, they have concerts and things there. Um, and yeah, it's a really fascinating place. So. I took some photographs of of the some of the columns just with my standard um, digital SLR camera. It was a nice overcast day when we went there, which was great. Uh, you can see that there's a lot of color, not color. There's a lot of texture, but it's not a lot of contrast. It's kind of um, you know kind of muted and not really not really um, much light and dark variation, which I thought would be quite good for a, a textured uh, pattern that's sort of continual and doesn't attract too much attention. So there's some fascinating patterns inside the rocks and I really want to uh, keep going with this and make some really unique textures. But for this video, I want to just make a, a standard kind of um, square texture. So what I'll do is I'll make a, a thousand pixel by a thousand pixel square and then I will find a section that I think will work. Now I've had a bit of a look and I think there's a section just down here somewhere that will work fairly well. So sort of just this area here, it's probably a bit hard to see, but I do have a thousand by thousand pixel square there. So I'm going to copy that and then I'm going to create a new document and I'm going to go with 72 DPI and it's going to be in pixels. It's going to be 1000 pixels. Now, why don't I just paste it into a new document? Um, there can be a little bit of bleed and things like that. It can be just a little bit too much in that way. So even though it says zero bleed, sometimes you'll get an extra pixel, which can, can actually help um, in some ways, and I'll show you in a second. Oh, wrong one there. Um, so I'll just copy the correct area so I didn't have it selected. So I'll just go back there. Okay, so I have my 1000 by 1000 square. It's not overly in focus, it, it must have been moving or something, but I don't think it'll matter because it's going to be a texture that will not be huge on screen. Plus, I'm actually going to reduce it in size once I'm finished stitching it all together. So now I've got my my texture in a 1000 by 1000 pixel frame. I'm going to rasterize it. And then I'm going to go up to filters. And I'm going to go to distort. And I'm going to go to affine. So just like affinity. I'm going to affine it and down here where it says offset X and offset Y this will basically split it into four and turn the outside edges in so they're all facing each other so I'm going to go 50% on the X axis and 50% on the Y axis and it'll be in wrap okay wrap so you imagine it's turned all the outside edges in so now I have the, you can see I've got a, an X or a plus sign through there. I've got four squares. Now all I need to do is uh, basically combine these. So 
make them look like they're they're supposed to be next to each other. Now I've had a bit of a play around with this and I've found the best techniques are using the clone brush tool and the blur and sharpen tools. Okay, so to get the clone brush tool working, I will just play around with the opacity and things like that a little bit and I'll just start up here. So every if you hold down the Alt key with the clone brush, it will take an impression of, of what you've got. So I'll just make that a bit bigger. So I'm taking, you can see the little plus sign on the left. It's taking whatever's there and putting it where my cursor is. So I'll take a little impression here and then I will paint like that. So the trick is to, I've found, is to make sure your movements aren't too mechanical. So the eye, like I, I'm a visual art teacher as well. The eye tends to pick up patterns. So if you can randomize your movements a little bit, it will come up a little bit better. So I'm not doing too much when I take a copy. I'm, I'm hitting Alt quite a lot and actually just doing a little bit and then hitting Alt again and finding another section. So I'm just going over that over and over until, you know, I think it looks convincing. So this crack here, I might try and extend it a little bit further across that boundary. So it kind of looks like it belongs. So I might just go back a bit. So I've taken a picture of that. I might make the brush a bit smaller. Take that there. Let's see if I can make that a bit more continual. Now if it gets a bit blurry, I can, I can play around with that a bit later as well. Okay, so what you should end up with is you'll end up with a point where you, you don't actually know where you've worked and where you haven't. So you'll lose track of the actual line. And that's great. That means you've done you've done the job properly. Um, so I'm going to just keep hitting alt and randomizing my my mark making here and I'll fast forward it and then you'll be able to see the, the next step. Okay. Okay, I'm just finishing off the last little section. So probably probably about 10 minutes of work there. Just going through, pressing Alt and taking sections randomly and then making making it look as smooth as possible. Now you'll, you will be able to see there's a little blurry section kind of along there. You can sort of see where I've been. So to help kind of mitigate that little bit of blurriness I'll go for the sharpen tool okay and I'll just I'll just set it to probably 80% opacity 40% flow we'll just see how it looks I can you can kind of get a bit carried away with this and end up kind of ruining it um, so it's just important to really take it slowly you kind of feel like you're not doing much and then you look you stand back and you realize you've actually been quite heavy-handed with it so I feel like I need a little bit more flow here 
just to get it working. So you can see even now, like you can see that line starting to show up again. So I can go back and tidy that up a bit. Um, I won't right now. I'm just kind of showing you its basic process. I'm just hoping to get to a point where I, I can't easily tell where the where the actual joins are. So I feel like I'm getting there now. Um, I could probably spend a lot more time on it, but hopefully that will be enough um, just for this for the sake of this video. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to a fine, so back to filter distort a fine, and then I'll go minus 50. So it's putting it back the way it was before and we'll have our our picture. Now I can uh, copy that and I will open a new a new picture. I'll do 72 DPI and maybe I'll go 4000 by 4000 pixels. Well that's the right one. Okay, so here we have our, our texture and it's been affined, so it should be fairly smooth. So I'll just do some copies by holding down control and then moving the mouse. That actually just allows you to make a quick copy. You can see there's a little gap, so you can just move it slightly over it and you'll see it joins up nice and smoothly. And then I'll just move that one like that. Okay, so now you've got your your textured pattern, and you can see there's still repetition, but for a background or something, it might what might look, look quite nice. Um, there's no obvious seams, and uh, with you know a bit of playing around with the um, adjustments, say you might want to just reduce all of the, the color and things. So I might go vibrance and then take out the color and the saturation. So I'll make it more of a gray and then I'll color it in whatever app I'm using, whether it's Unity or whether it's some other document that you want to make. And so you can create a the same pattern, but using you know limited color you can tint it or anything like that. So it tends to work pretty well. Um, I'd like to hear if there's any feedback or tips that I might benefit from as well. Um, I'll certainly make another video if this is something people are interested in. Uh, but that's, that's the way I've been making textures that are repeating for a uh, Unity project that we're working on. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful.